Okay. All right, so what we're going to do today, uh, gentlemen, is set up for a reflux. I'm going to go through some of the equipment first with you, um, so you know what it's called and basically what it's used for. So what we've done is we've gone and collected our quick fix set uh, from the cupboard, all right, and they are our kit. Um, and contained in the kit there's a few basic um, things that we're going to use. Um, so typically there's a measuring, sorry, a separating funnel, okay, which looks something like this, all right. That's obviously what we're going to use for this second step of our ester prep, and we'll talk about using that a little bit later. Um, there is a stopper, okay, a ground glass stopper, okay, to use for the separating funnel, and at various times you might want to use it for your distillation or your reflux setup, but not while you're refluxing, obviously, and not while it's hot. Um, this goes in the top of the still head, okay, this is called the still head, and inside of that there is a, an actual, um, like a rubber bung, you tighten it up, and that actually holds your um, thermometer in place, all right, ready to do a distillation. There are other bits and pieces, okay, this is a receiver adapter that goes in the any condenser, so that as things actually are condensed, you collect them, okay, and you can obviously align that depending on the height of what you're working from. We're pretty lucky here because what we have um, is a heating mantle set up, okay, for our school, um, and a heating mantle uh, takes away all flame from this reaction. We would normally do it with a pear-shaped flask, with a tripod, okay, and a naked flame. Not a good idea when we're actually boiling esters or particularly in this case alcohols, um, you can imagine if there's any leakage um, around the top of your flask, okay, it's, it's very easy for it to catch a light. So if we take the flame away, it's much safer. Heating mantle just like a heater, okay, electrical coil in there, and we've got a dial up setting here, all right, that will turn on shortly when we're ready to start refluxing. All right, you'll go to the fume hood, okay, and you will follow your procedure, okay, because we need to mix together the alcohol and the ester, and of course the catalyst for this is concentrated sulfuric acid. So you've got to be very careful with the sulfuric. Again, that stays in the fume hood. Avoid contact with your hands, you've got to use glasses, make sure the shield's down when you're doing that. Once you've got that ready, you are almost ready to get set up for the reflux. What you will do is, um, you always start typically from the base and you work your way up, okay? Um, you are supplied with boiling chips, so you put one or two of these, probably one is plenty, okay, into your round bottom flask. And that's going to ensure basically even boiling. It won't allow the mixture to superheat. We don't want it to actually boil and all of a sudden go straight up to the top of the condenser, which I've seen happen, and eat the roof. It's probably not good considering what's going to be in this flask. So it just allows things to, to boil consistently, all right, over time. The temperature, we sort of said tend, uh, tend to set these out about seven or eight. Okay, is roughly what we start off with. You might need to back it off um, or to turn it up depending on how the rate of boiling goes. So we want a steady boiling, okay, during reflux. The reflux will start, flask is obviously going to fit into there, all right. Your condenser, all right, you don't take the hose off the condenser, they come like this. And the reason for that is, if you take these hoses on and off, okay, typically this is the one that gets broken, all right, and nine times out of ten it goes through a student's hand, which is real pain with all the paperwork. Um, so we just keep the hoses on, okay, as is. So what we do is the condenser goes in the top for reflux, okay, and I'm just going to, can I have an assistant please? Can you just hold that for me? Absolutely. Okay, just hold the condenser straight for me. Nube? Yeah. Thank you Nube, all right. And I'm just going to lower that down to about there, that's plenty. And what I'm gonna be looking for when you do the experiment, nice and vertical, that's it, is something like this, and you notice that I'm not, that's enough, that's fine. Um, you are not going to clamp this thing, okay, excessively hard, all right, it's just to hold it in place, that's all it is, all right, just to hold it vertical. You will never clamp the condenser in the middle, anybody say why? It breaks the condenser. It breaks the condenser. So this is an area where you don't clamp it, if you are using a tripod, okay, set up and a Bunsen burner, you may clamp it around this part of the flask and you'll have a clamp at the top, all right? But again, it's only to hold it stationary so it doesn't fall over, all right? I don't need to have it this high, okay, in the lab jack, all right? This is a lab jack, by the way. 
Um, and I'm going to set that up for distillation in another video that we'll do um, once we get the reflux done. So we're almost ready to set up for actual um, reflux. Obviously there's nothing in there, all right? I'm not going to start the mantle with nothing in there. So we're going to set up for reflux. The water will go in through the bottom. Why does it go in through the bottom? Any ideas? Be That's the run uphill. Gravity. gravity. If I had the water coming in from the top, okay, what do you think is going to happen with the water in the condenser? Is it going to fill up? No, I can show you what it looks like if you wanted to see it. But the water just runs straight down, down the bottom. So the majority of the condenser is not surrounded by water. So if you fill it up from the bottom, okay, it fills up entirely from the top, from the bottom to the top. Okay, so therefore the vapour is in contact with the water all the time. If we didn't have that, Obviously we're going to lose the product, okay, and anything else to the atmosphere. We don't want that to happen. All right, you can use this method here, all right. It's just a little bit handy, and all this does is it just holds that into the sink for me, okay. Before you start any reflux, any distillation, I've got to come past and check your setup. So I'm going to check that this is sealed. You don't jam it in, it's ground glass, it just automatically fit. I'm going to check the nice stopper in the top during reflux. I'm going to check that you've got blowing chips in here, okay, before you start the reaction off, okay, and I'm also going to check that you've got the water turned on. Now, these are not constant flow taps, okay, if you go to some labs, what happens is that you turn the tap on, you know, it fills up with water, you turn the tap on and you can turn it flat out and there's one flow, alright, these aren't like that, so therefore you've got to be careful, you turn the tap on slowly, alright, and that's about all you need, just a trickle of water uh, through the condenser. That'll be heaps. I might just turn it on a fraction more. And that's, that's plenty, all right, for that condenser. What you'll need to do is just during the reflux process, you might need to just come and check that the water's still flowing, because there's a, there's a change in water flow, okay, occasionally as well. You don't want that to stop flowing. Again, if it stops flowing, the liquid that you're condensing can go and evaporate. We don't want to lose our product because in here is going to be our stuff. Okay. Once it's finished condense, uh, finished refluxing, all right, you need to let the whole thing cool down before you do anything else. Okay. So do not touch anything while it's hot. And you, obviously you can feel it once you can touch the, the equipment around here. Then you can disassemble it. Then we, work, then we move into the extraction. Okay. The extraction process. What you'll probably do as well is... I would suggest you have a few um, clamps set up, okay, and I'd have another one at the top. That oh, that might be okay like that, all right. So I'm going to just basically support the separating funnel like that, and I'll take you through the, the separating process later, all right. So we're going to put our all of our chemicals straight into here, minus the boiling chips. We don't want the boiling chips to go into here because because. It's going to block the tap, alright? So we're just going to decant that. We have a filter, filter, filter funnel from here, and we're going to decant that straight into our separating funnel after we've done our reflux. Remember, you need to take note of the colour change at the start. What's the, what does it look like? Okay? Um, and what's happening during reflux? You'll see the chemical will come up here, it'll evaporate, it'll recondense. Evaporate, recondense, alright? So you need to take note of those, and of course, when you actually disassemble that for us at the end, what we're hoping is, when you do have, have the flask out, you're going to look at it and you should get two layers. We should get an ester layer, which is the organic layer, and we should have an aqueous layer. That's what we're looking for. In the past, sometimes the ester appears uh, faint pink in colour, sometimes it's yellow. So it's a whole range of different colours that you might have, all right? And it seems to be pretty random, my experience, um, over the last you know, 20 years of doing this, 30 years. Any questions about that process of reflux? and then we'll take you through the separation next. All right, that's it. Thank you, recorder.